When was the last time you did something for the first time? You remember that feeling of hesitation. Maybe you're not ready. Perhaps you're not good enough. You doubt yourself. It's a long road ahead. And right now you think safe is a good place to be. You take a step back, but in doing so, you see the whole picture. You remember the stakes you were brave enough to take. So you shout at the unknown no longer because you are your own master. You rise up because you know you're not alone. Because you stand on the shoulders of the ones before you. And through them you realize, you are more afraid of not trying than failing. They hold your hand, lead you to the peak of your potential. And once on top, you take the leap and do it. The first time you flew and tasted freedom. The first time you went the extra mile and never looked back. The first time you understood that something so small could change the course of your future. The first time you put yourself first. At First Metro Asset, we value you and your achievements. As we navigate through this better normal together, we are here to help you cherish your firsts and make those moments last. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for guidance, wisdom, and support as we gather once again for the annual Stockholders Meet. Help us to engage in a meaningful discussion. Fill us with your grace, Lord God, as we make right decisions. And continue to remind us that all that we do here today, all that we accomplish, is for the pursuit for the greater glory of God. May your goodness and love be present amongst us today. Come bless our cadet, our board of directors, our president, the officers, the family family, our partners, and our shareholders with unity, hope, and vision. We ask these things in your most holy name. Amen.
for First Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund Annual Shareholders Meeting. Present in this event are the Board of Directors of First Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund, Inc. Additional reminders to our shareholders. Shareholders who have completed the pre-registration requirements are qualified to vote. When the poll questions are launched, which will be flashed on your screen, you may cast your vote on the proposed resolutions by clicking on your choice from the available options, and then click Submit. Results of the preliminary voting will be presented after each poll, and final results will be included in the minutes of the meeting. I am now turning over the digital floor to Mr. Eduardo R. Carrion. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the year 2024 annual stockholders meeting of First Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund, Inc. Pursuant to regulations of the Securities and Exchange Commission, allowing holding of annual meetings online, the company is conducting this year's annual stockholders meeting via remote communication with the stockholders participating by electronic means in accordance with the rules set by SEC. The meeting will now please come to order. Mr. Secretary, have you sent the notice of this meeting? And is there a quorum for this meeting? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the required notices were duly sent. And this is to certify that uh, the notices for the 2024 annual stockholders meeting were published to notify the stockholders of record for the said uh, FMETF fund in the business sections of Malaya and Manila Times on May 14, 2024 and on May 15, 2024, in print and online format, and in FAMI and the company's website in accordance with the SEC regulations. They are actually present in person or represented by their proxies by remote communication, 13,698,533 common shares out of the 19,378,000 741 common shares outstanding. This constitutes 71% uh, of the outstanding capital stock. We therefore have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. There being the required quorum, this meeting is therefore duly constituted for the transaction of the business in the agenda. Each item for approval in the agenda will appear in your screen and stockholders participating can cast their vote by clicking the appropriate box. The votes of stockholders who sent their duly accomplished forms with votes prior to the meeting will be shown on screen. The additional votes cast online shall be added to the result of the preliminary voting. The next item is the approval of the minutes of the stockholders meeting held on June 21, 2023. The matters taken up in the said meeting were emailed to the participating shareholders and also published in our website. Is there any motion from the floor? I am Belsa Halilio, proxy for MBTC Trust Corp, stockholder of FMETF. Mr. Chairman, I move for the approval of the minutes. I am Alexandra Pilatan, proxy for Ruth Janeco. I second the motion. The host will now launch the poll question. You may cast your vote by clicking on the available options. Appearing on screen is the poll for the First Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund, Inc. The voting will now be closed. Mr. Chairman? May I now request the Corporate Secretary 
to present the preliminary voting results. I heard from you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, based on the preliminary voting results, we have 71% who voted in favor, none voted against, and there are no abstentions. There being a motion duly made and seconded, and the required votes obtained, and there being no objections for the approval of the minutes of the annual stockholders meeting held on June 21, 2023, Said minutes are approved. The next item in the agenda is the annual report to the stockholders. Ms. Karen Lizaroa, FAMI president, will now render the report on operations and financial condition and FMETF's performance. Good, uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Directors and uh, shareholders, allow me to share my screen for the presentation of the fund manager's report. Okay. Once again, good afternoon. Um, I will be providing, given that this is an annual shareholders meeting, I will provide you with an update with regard to the um, ending figures uh, or audited financial statement of the ETF as of 2023 compared to the previous year of 2022. And then I will also likewise provide an update with regard to the performance of the fund as of April 2024 compared to the same period in 2023. So to start off with the ETF, the total assets under management, according to the audited financial statement as of December, 2023, stood at 2.141 billion, or a reduction of about 3% from the same period of the previous year in December, 2022, where it ended at 2.2 billion. Total liabilities stood at 1,656,000, uh, or a reduction in liabilities by about 24% from the previous year of 2, 2,169,000. Total shareholders' equity ended at 2.139, um, or a reduction of about 2.9% from December 2022's number of 2.2 billion um, in shareholders' equity. Fast forward to the last uh, three columns. Uh, in front of you. For the first four months of 2024, the total assets under management for the ETF uh, stood at 2.141,987, or a 3% reduction from the same period of the previous year of January to April 2023, where it stood at 2.2 billion. The ROE for the year 2023 was at 1.11% um, or an improvement from the previous year where it was uh, negative 5.92%. Okay. Um, as for the April 2024 numbers, the ROE of the ETF stood at 14.77%, an improvement almost doubling from the previous period of 2023 for the first four months where it was at 7.75%. The production numbers or the sales redemptions and net sales numbers. So as mentioned, as of December, 2023, the ETF was at 2.14 billion. Um, slight decline from the previous year the, where it was at 2.2 billion. The gross sales or the gross subscription was at 74 million, a reduction of about 80% from December from 2022, where we were able to um, register to gross, gross subscriptions of 364 million. Net sales for uh, full year 2023 was a net redemption or eight of um, 88 million. 
um, a reversal of the positive net subscriptions in the year before where it stood at 147 million. If we take a look at the funds AUM increase and decrease uh, and breaking that down into whether it is from market valuations or total redemptions, as mentioned, you'll see that the ETF where it was 2.2, and it declined from, or it cited there was a there was a decline from twenty twenty two. Total sales for twenty twenty three was at seventy four million. Total redemptions was at one hundred sixty three million, for a net redemption amount of eighty nine million. Um, there was an improvement in the market uh, conditions amounting to 24. However, that wasn't enough to be able to bring up the total AUM of the fund. Uh, once again, this is just a, a repeat of the um, previous slide. However, this is providing you the update for 2024. Earlier, that was the year end numbers of 2023 versus 2022. Now, this is the number of as of 2024. AUM is still within the range of 2.14 billion. Okay, for 2024, um, reduction of about uh, uh, less than about 50 million from the previous period of 2023, where it was at 2.2 billion. Gross sales for April, as of April 2024, was at 14 million. The same period last year, we were at 26. Net sales for 2024 as 108 negative or net redemption. Uh, last year, we were also at the net redemption of 55 million. If we take a look at the fund performance, given that the ETF is a passively managed fund, then it tracks the... Um, uh, Philippine Stock Exchange Index. However, given that this is also a total return, then uh, dividends are also in, reinvested into the fund. So you'll see that um, over the last uh, four months, okay, the uh, fund has outperformed or is actually ranked number one in all of the passively managed funds, whether it's be 30, 60, 90, or 120 day. Notably also is that this fund over the last 10 years has actually outranked all of the passively managed funds in the industry. So for the first four months of 2024, the fund generated a return of 4.81%, outperforming the benchmark or the Philippine Stock Exchange Index, where that one was registered at 4.13%. 4 for the first four months of the year. This is just a graphical representation of the uh, net asset value per share or the price of the fund over the last nine years since its inception. Okay, So you'll see that it has tracked the index, it's been volatile, but when in 2015, where the price was above par at about 115, it peaked in 2017 at about 135, now it's down to 100, uh, a little bit over par of about 100 to 103 in terms of price. That's as of April 30, 2024. Mr. Chair, that ends my uh, report on the production and the uh, financial status and performance of the uh, ETF. Um, I can now pass you on to the fund manager, Mr. Ed Sir Trinidad for a capital market outlook. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Roa. Due to logistical limitations of the meeting conducted virtually, open forum discussion will not be possible during the meeting. However, a stockholder will be given opportunity to raise any relevant questions or express an appropriate comment limited to the annual report by sending an email to asm at fami.com.ph. Any relevant questions or comments received via email 
shall be properly acknowledged, noted, and addressed accordingly. Mr. Elser Trinidad will now render the report on market outlook. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good afternoon to our uh, board of directors and good afternoon uh, to our shareholders. Um, I think um, 2023 has been um, a challenging year and um, um, there has been a lot of expectations during the first couple of uh, first uh, three months of 2024 that uh, things will change. Um, this um, is uh, apparent uh, as we can see in this chart that the market was up by about uh, 8% uh, until April 1. Uh, then um, uh, after April 1, there has been, uh, the market has been, um, has reversed in terms of its trajectory and has been volatile ever since. One of the, if you are going to compare us uh, relative to other markets in South Asia, uh, we're not uh, alone as uh, there are a certain other countries that uh, fared uh, much worse as compared to us. Um, given that um, there has been a lot of expectations that the market uh, or that the U.S. Fed will uh, cut its rate. However, um, there has been some, uh, some sort of changes in terms of that outlook. Um, our currency was not affected, uh, was also affected um, as uh, from being one of the best performing currencies uh, during the first quarter and starting uh, end of uh, March, it uh, become uh, one of the worst performing currencies uh, in the region. And one of uh, um, that has or spooked a lot of our foreign uh, investors. And this is the reason why uh, from a net buying position during the first quarter, um, foreigners had uh, turned to net sell. One of the biggest reasons why uh, there has been a sudden departure in terms of sentiment is um, there has been some uh, concerns in terms of the inflation. Um, as inflation continued to be uh, at the high end of uh, the BSP range. And uh, this raises concerns that uh, it may um, be uh, premature for, BS for the BSP to cut uh, their policy rates because of the high inflation um, that we've been experiencing, even in the US, uh, where there has been uh, expectations that a rate cut may happen as early as March, and that has been uh, turned back, uh, considering that uh, inflation in the U.S. remains sticky and has been at uh, significantly above uh, their target of about 2%. And as a result, uh, from an initial estimate that uh, the rate cut may happen in in first uh, during March, uh, that has been dialed back and are now looking at um, at the second latter part of second half. Um, looking at our first quarter numbers, um, our earnings, corporate earnings uh, as a whole, um, has uh, has been uh, quite uh, okay. Uh, with banks and consumer companies leading the growth, with banks still experiencing um, a low double-digit growth in terms of their no loan take-up, while uh, consumer companies um, have experienced a strong recovery in terms of their margins as their cost of input had, um, uh, had declined. However, um, we've, we noticed that during the first uh, couple of uh, months of the year, uh, we've seen some slowdown in terms of uh, consumer demand as inflation has started to take a toll on uh, the consumer's wallets. Uh, thus, uh, consumer outlook um, had been declining. Um, and this is the latest survey made by um, the BSP as uh, the consumer outlook for the next three months um, continued to decline. And one of the main reasons why it has declined is it is being weighed by um, the high uh, food inflation. Uh, rice prices continue to be um, at a high and that has dampened uh, consumer enthusiasm. However, uh, 
I think for second half, uh, we are still expecting that uh, there might be some um, better uh, outlook or better performance for our market, uh, considering that our uh, macro fundamentals remain uh, quite uh, solid uh, with our GDP growth continue to be one of the fastest growing economies um, in the region. Uh, looking at the valuation on our um, market, uh, we're still trading at a very uh, attractive level. Um, and that can, um, I think, uh, be a magnet uh, for investors to reconsider investing in the Philippines. Um, I think there has been also concern about our, the depreciation of the peso. Um, however, um, we are quite cognizant that um, or quite uh, uh, optim uh, we're very optimistic that the peso um, shall improve in terms of their value by the end of the year uh, because the following. First, OFW remittances remain quite resilient as can be seen here on the chart, whereby we've been, we've continued to see a stable growth uh, on a year in year basis. And in addition, one of the key concern is in terms of um, the US, um, we expect that the US, uh, as I mentioned, that there's a possibility that the US Fed will cut their rates by fourth quarter, and that should allow um, the uh, dollar to weaken and thus will provide some uh, boost uh, on our local currency. And lastly, if you are looking at one of the key things of inflation is the, um, uh, the rice prices uh, with the cut in tariff from 35 to 15%, we expect that the retail uh, rice prices will have um, a, a big impact uh, in terms of the decline and uh, uh, retail prices. And in addition, um, one of our uh, key sources of imported uh, rice, which is Vietnam, has also experienced a decline in terms of the prices. On a year-to-date basis, it has already declined by 11%, and that should also help us um, improve to improve our inflation um, during the latter part of this uh, of second half. Uh, looking at um, the estimates made by our brokers, uh, because of those factors, they, they remain bullish on the market, as you can be seen here on their index target by year end. Uh, they're still expecting that the market uh, will end uh, to about 7.3. Um, and if you are going to compare that with their previous um, survey, uh, not much has been uh, made in terms of their uh, targets. Um, which shows you that uh, the level of confidence that uh, 2024 may finally end on a positive note um, is, uh, is, um, is high. Um, looking at the uh, EPS growth, um, EPS growth remains uh, at the high single digit. And in terms of GDP growth, they're still looking at uh, GDP growth to expand by 5.7%. Looking at uh, inflation, uh, they expect that inflation uh, will end uh, on, by an average of about 3.7%. Uh, this uh, indicates that inflation uh, by uh, the rest of the year will start to fall. Um, and uh, they expect that uh, the BSP will cut uh, their policy rate by once by about 25 basis points. Although, um, if you, as you can see here on, uh, on the chart, um, there are certain broker, there are uh, some brokers who are looking at even higher rate cut by about 50 basis points. Um, looking at, as I mentioned, uh, as we expect that the uh, dollar uh, or that the peso will recover by year end, um, the our brokers are looking at the peso to close the year at 56 spot 25. Um, to wrap up my. Uh, uh, my presentation. Um, I expect that I th um, the PSE will end better as compared to 2023, although um, I expect a much a lower growth rate as compared to our broker's uh, forecast, as I expect that the growth will be between 5 to 10%. Um, this is basically, although I don't expect, although we have to uh, expect that there still um, are some headwinds, 
uh, by third quarter uh, due to um, a lot of macro uncertainties and uh, due to always the data that is coming from both in the local as well as in the US. But however, the bottom line here is macro, macro fundamentals remains resilient and a positive uh, spillover uh, in the latter part of um, the second half may happen because of the rate expectations or rate cut expectations from the US Fed and the BSP. And that ends my presentation. Thank you, Ed, sir. We now move to the next item in the agenda, which is the ratification of all acts and resolutions of the board of directors and management and all committees for the fiscal year 2023 for FMETF. Is there any motion from the floor? I am Eloisa Corpus, proxy for Cold Financial Group Incorporated, stockholder of FMETF. Mr. Chairman, I move that all acts, transactions, and resolutions of the board of directors and management and all committees for the fiscal year 2023 of FMETF and the minutes of the meeting of the board and board committees be ratified and confirmed. I'm March Lacedis, proxy for China Bank Securities, stockholder of FMETF. I second the motion. The host will now launch the poll question. You may cast your vote by clicking on the available options. Appearing on screen is the poll for the first Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund team. The voting will now be closed. Mr. Chairman. May I now request the Corporate Secretary to present the preliminary voting results. Mr. Chairman, based on the preliminary uh, voting results, we have 71% who voted in favor. None voted against and uh, there are no abstentions. There being a motion duly made and seconded and the required votes obtained to ratify all acts and resolutions of the board of directors, management and all committees for the fiscal year 2023, including the minutes of meetings of the board and the committees of FMETF, the motion is carried. Next in the agenda is the election of the members of the Board of Directors of FMETF to serve for the year 2024 to 2025. Ms. Karen Roa, Chairman of the Nomination Committee, will now explain the nomination procedure under current SEC rules. Mr. Chairman, in compliance with the requirements of the Securities and Exchange Commission, as well as the FMETF Manual on Corporate Governance, the nomination committee was tasked with the review and evaluation of the qualifications of all persons nominated to the board. Pursuant to this mandate, the nomination committee reviewed the qualifications of the following nominees to the board of directors and certifies that based on the records, they have all the qualifications and none of the disqualifications prescribed by law and regulations. The list of nominees of FMETF is contained in the definitive information statement sent to all stockholders and submitted to the SEC prior to today's meeting. The nominees for the first Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund, Inc. are as follows. Mr. Eduardo R. Carrion, Mr. Michael G. Say, Mr. Winston Andrew Pexon, Ms. Karen Lisa Roa, Ms. Rodora Angela Ferrer, Father Rafael Eloriaga, Mr. Jose Nograles. Father Rafael Eloriaga, CM, Ms. Rodora Angela F. Ferrer, and Mr. Jose Nograles are nominees for independent directors. The nominees, with the exception of Mr. Jose Nograles, are incumbent directors of the FMETF. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Roa. Is there any motion from the floor? Mr. Chairman, I move that the nominees enumerated by the nomination committee chairman be declared elected to the board of directors of the FMETF. I second the motion. 
The host will now launch the poll question. You may cast your vote by clicking on the available options. Appearing on screen is the poll for the first Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund Inc. The voting will now be closed. Mr. Chairman. May I now request the Corporate Secretary to present the preliminary voting results. Uh, based on the preliminary voting results, we have 71% who voted in favor, zero voted against, and uh, zero also uh, abstention. Let it be on record that upon nominations duly made and there being no other nominations, the following stockholders were unanimously elected to serve on the board. Mr. Eduardo Carrion, Mr. Michael Sai, Mr. Winston Pexon, Ms. Karen Roa, Ms. Rodora Ferrer, Father Rafael Eloriaga, Mr. Jose Nograles. First, let me welcome our incoming director, Mr. Jose Nograles. We are also very grateful to our incumbent directors for their continuing and invaluable service to the company. Finally, on behalf of the board, may I express gratitude to our valued stockholders for your steadfast loyalty over the years and for your faith and confidence in the company. While unusual times are upon us, we shall, with your support, face the challenges with hope anchored in divine providence and with faith in the company's long-standing values of dedication and hard work that has seen this institution through many challenges in its existence. It is our honor and privilege to serve you and this esteemed institution. The next item in the agenda is the ratification of the approval of the board for the renewal of the management and distribution agreement of the FAMI funds. This was approved by the Board of Directors in its meeting held on March 22, 2024. Is there any motion from the floor? Mr. Chairman, I move that the renewal of the management and distribution agreement of FMPTF be ratified. I second the motion. The host will now launch the poll question. You may cast your vote by clicking on the available options. Appearing on screen is the poll for the first Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund Inc. The voting will now be closed. Mr. Chairman. May I now request the Corporate Secretary to present the preliminary voting results. Based on the preliminary voting results, we have 71% who voted in favor, none voted against, and there are no abstentions, Mr. Chairman. There being a motion duly made and seconded, and the required votes obtained, the renewal of the management and distribution agreement of the FAMI funds is hereby ratified. The next item in the agenda is the appointment of an independent external auditor for the fiscal year 2024. The audit committee in its meeting held on June 11, 2024, had approved the appointment of SGV and company. We now submit this for your ratification. Is there any motion from the floor? Mr. Chairman, I move that the appointment of Cisip Gores Velayo and company as independent external auditor of FMATF be ratified. I second the motion. The host will now launch the poll question. You may cast your vote by clicking on the available options. Appearing on screen is the poll for the first Metro Philippine Equity Exchange Traded Fund Inc. The voting will now be closed. Mr. Chairman. May I now request the Corporate Secretary to present the preliminary voting results. 
based on the preliminary voting results, we have 71% who voted in favor, none voted against, and there are no abstentions, Mr. Chair. There being a motion duly made and seconded, and the required votes obtained, the appointment of SGV and company as independent external auditor of FMETF for the fiscal year 2023 is hereby ratified. The next item in the agenda is the amendment of the prospectus of FMETF. The board of directors in its meeting held on March 22, 2024 had approved the amendment of the prospectus to include changes in the relevant policies and procedures to ensure alignment with actual requirements and current processes, as well as updated summary financial information of FMETF. We now submit this for your ratification. For the approval of the revision stated, vote, at, vote of at least the majority of the stockholders is required. Is there any motion from the floor? Mr. Chairman, I move that the amendment to the prospectus to include changes in the relevant policies and procedures to ensure alignment with actual requirements and current processes, as well as updated summary financial information of FMETF be ratified. Second the motion. There being a motion duly made and seconded and the required votes obtained, the amendment of the prospectus is hereby ratified. Are there any matters to be taken up? None, Mr. Chairman. There are no other matters for consideration of the stockholders. Stockholders may raise any relevant questions or express an appropriate comment limited to the agenda by sending an email to asm at fami.com.ph. Any relevant questions or comment received via email shall be properly acknowledged, noted, and addressed accordingly. If there are no other matters for approval of the stockholders, we can now adjourn the meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move that the meeting of FMETF be adjourned. I second the motion. There being no other matters to consider, the year 2024 annual stockholders meeting of FMETF is hereby adjourned. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank Everyone. you. Stop recording.